pleasant day to each and everyone. In our previous lesson, we discussed about the levels of measurement. We have learned about nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Also, we discussed the concepts of validity and reliability and its different types and the significance in establishing a sound instrument or a questionnaire. At this point, we are going to discuss another topic and it's all about data gathering methods and procedures. In reality, you will collect data from your respondents the second semester pa po. That is for our nursing research too. But yung lecture po will be delivered today and that is um, sa ating subject ngayon na nursing research one. So ganito po yung process. So once your panelists approve your proposed topic, that is your chapters 1 and 2, or that's from the introduction hanggang sa methodology. Once they have approved it, your paper, your proposal, your research proposal will be submitted and subjected for review ng ating REC. And when you say REC, it's um, Research Ethics Committee, wherein they will be reviewing your paper for its ethical soundness. So, it just check nila if all ethical principles and considerations uh, will be observed no, uh, in your paper. Um, it will take time for the REC to review your paper and once they have approved your paper, they will be releasing, uh, giving you a, an approval letter saying that your, your, your paper is approved, your protocol is approved together with informed consent and you may proceed to the, uh, or you may proceed to your data collection. But again, just a reminder before gathering your data, next semester po, um, you should have a valid and reliable instrument. Okay, so whether it's a standardized, you are adopting a standardized instrument or you are going to subject your instrument for validation and vali uh, validation and reliability testing, it is imperative na dapat ma-observe yung process na to. It will all boils down sa naging agreement nyo with your panel members or and also the chairman during the during the defense. So, kung ano man yung napag yung naging agreement nyo during the proposal defense, whether you're going to have it validated or also you will be including reliability uh, testing sa instrument nyo, so be it. You have to accomplish what you have agreed during the proposal defense. Okay, so let's now talk about our lesson which is about data gathering methods and procedures. Questionnaires are one of the most common data collection methods used by nurse researchers. Other data collection methods include interviews, observational methods, and various physiological and psychological measures. Try not to be confused by the wide variety of data collection methods as we discuss the various methods that is presented in this chapter Try to envision a research project that might call for each type of data collection method that I will be discussing. So when we say data, these are the pieces of information or facts that are collected in research. So that is our definition of data, pieces of information or facts collected in research. Data is plural, datum is singular po. Although the data collection step of the research process may be very time-consuming, it is sometimes considered the most exciting part of research. Time-consuming siya um, in a sense that depende po kasi, um, depending on your research design, di ba? you have hundreds of um, respondents depending on the sample size also. And if you are collecting a qualitative data, you are conducting interview guide questions to your informants. So it will really take time. 
Kaya yung second semester natin in our Nursing Research 2, it's allotted for your data collection and also the write-up for your chapters um, 3 and 4 or 4 and 5, no? So, depending on the structure of our of your thesis. But in, in general, yung Nursing Research 2, um, it will start sa ating results and discussion hanggang sa conclusion and recommendation. Okay? But again, um, time-consuming bago mo magawa yung results and discussion, of course, you have to collect your data and it's time-consuming. So, data collection is a systematic process of gathering observations or measurements. Whether you are performing research for business, governmental, or academic purposes, data collection allows you to gain first-hand knowledge and original insights into your research problem. Take note of the term systematic process. So, di ba in your paper, nakalagay doon your data collection procedure, the step-by-step -step process na um, gagawin nyo when you collect your data. Make sure that you observe the, uh, those steps no, indicated in your chapter 2 or in your data collection, um, data, data gathering procedure. Okay, in developing a data collection plan, researchers must decide the type of data to gather. Three types have been frequently used by nurse researchers. So we have um, three types po of data. So you have SR or the self-report data, also termed as patient reported outcome or PRO. Um, itong self-report data are participants responses to researchers' questions such as interview. In nursing studies, self-reports are the most common data collection approach. So, ito po yung, um, yung, yung ginagawa nating survey or yung interview um, to, uh, uh, with our uh, respondents or participants. So, uh, example po siya ng self-report data. Mamaya as we um, proceed with our discussion, mas dig deeper po po natin yung lessons na to or yung, yung concept na to. Next, you have direct observation of people's behaviors and characteristics can be used for certain questions as well. And then, nurses also use biophysiologic measures to assess important clinical variables. So, ito po yung ating, actually, the focus of our lesson for today. Itong types of data. So, this table shows the common instruments used for different data types. So, for example, data type is a self-report data. Data research methods involving this include survey, interview, FGD, or focus group discussion, and journaling. If you will use survey, for example, which is common in quantitative research, ang instruments you can use include questionnaires, psychological tests, and exams. For interview naman, which is common in qualitative research, instruments you can use are interview, schedule or guide, or ito tinatawag nating IGQ, interview guide question, IGQ, interview guide question. Or you can also use um, an audio recorder. For FGD and journaling, common din ito pareho sa qualitative research. And then ito naman yung mga instruments that we can use no, for FGD and journaling. Mabaga, this table summarizes, um, in a quick glance, summarizes the type of data, the research method, and yung mga possible instruments that you can use. If the type of data is observation, again, uh, we have here the different methods, and then these are the instruments. Then we have records review. This is the 
research method and then ito yung mga instruments that you can use for records review. Common to if you will be, for example, um, utilizing a qualitative design. Meron tayong mga uh, qualitative design na gumagamit ng records review. And then finally, we have uh, biophysical data and then these are the possible instruments that we can use. So again, this is, this is just a summary. We are going to discuss this further as we proceed with our discussion. Now, regardless of the type of data collected in a study, data collection methods vary along several dimensions, including structure, quantifiability, and objectivity. Data for quantitative studies tend to be quantifiable and structured with the same information gathered from all participants in a comparable, pre-specified way. Quantitative researchers generally strive for methods that are, that are as objective as possible. So let's start. Again, the first type of data that we are going to have our attention and will be our focus is self-reports. This is very common. No? Self-reports or also known as PRO, Patient Reported Outcomes. So structured self-report methods are used when researchers know in advance exactly what they need to know and can frame appropriate questions to obtain the needed information. Structured self-report data are collected with a formal written document which is termed as an instrument. Again, pag sinabi natin instrument, it is a structured self-report data and um, formal and of course it is um, kumbaga written. No? It's, it's already um, printed. No? The instrument is known as an interview schedule when the questions are asked orally, face-to-face -face or by telephone. Ngayon kasi hindi na uso yung telephone. So probably uh, using um, the web no? or using our computer or our laptop or desktop. No? So it's either via Zoom or Google Meet. So pwedeng, um, we use interview schedule which is a type of an instrument. Or an instrument can be a questionnaire. When respondents complete the, the, the instruments themselves. So, the different adva advantages of self reports if um, researchers want to know how people feel or what they believe, the most direct approach is to ask them. Self reports frequently yield information that would be difficult or impossible to gather by other means. Behaviors can be observed but only if people are willing to engage in them publicly and engage in them at the time of data collection. So you know that is one of the advantages of self-reports. Now when if you want to to obtain information, direct hand information from the respondents, then you can ask them directly. Okay, so you can use self-reports. Um on the other hand, the disadvantages of a uh, this method or type of data would be, um, which is the a serious issue of concern, would be the validity and accuracy of self-reports. No, kung valid ba talaga and accurate yung nire report or sinasabi sa atin ng ating respondents. The question here is how can we be sure that the respondents feel or act the way they say they do. Investigators usually have no choice but to assume that most respondents have been frank. So wala po tayong magagawa kung ano yung sabihin sa atin ng ating respondents through the survey or through the through self-report data collection we take as it is na po. Okay? So we are we are um kumbaga we are trusting that the respondents are truthful of their answers. No? Yet, we all have a tendency to present ourselves in the best light and this may conflict with the truth. When reading research reports, you should be alert to potential biases in self-reported data. 
by the way, um, again, just to going back dito sa instrument natin. Again, if an instrument, um, if you ask questions directly through face-to-face -face, um, uh, oral questioning via face-to-face uh, -face man yan or, or using telephone or online platform, that is interview schedule. And common po yan sa mga qualitative research. On the other hand, um, if you are just going to ask your respondents to complete the quest, the, the, the paper or the survey tool, survey material among themselves, then that is questionnaire. And common naman yan sa quantitative research. So again, questionnaire for quanti, uh, interview schedule that is for quality. So we, we are done with the pros and cons of uh, self-report data. Let's now talk about question form of the self-reports or PRO, pa uh, patient reported outcomes. So in a totally structured instrument, respondents are asked to respond to the same question in the same order. Close-ended or also termed as fixed alternative questions are ones in which the response options are pre-specified. The options may, uh, may range from simple yes or no to complex expressions of opinion. Such questions ensure comparability of responses and facilitate analysis. So here is our example. Rather examples of close-ended question. So you have here dichotomous multiple choice, forced choice question, or rating question. Um, a dichotomous question, you are uh, giving two options to your respondents. Kaya die, die means two. So the, the respondents have two options to choose from. Example, have you ever been pregnant? So one option is yes, the other is no. Second type of a close-ended question would be multiple choice question. Again, when you say close ended, no, um, the respondents cannot um, explain further kung ano yung sagot niya. Kaya siya close ended. Mamimili lang siya sa options na meron ka doon sa iyong tool. Okay, just like in this example. So, for multiple choice, how important is it to you to avoid a pregnancy at this time? So, and these are the options multiple choice format naman yan. And then, force choice question. Um, you are uh, giving options to your respondents and then parang they are forced to choose no, from the given option. So, pwedeng more than two yung force choice questions depending um, on your tool or depende kung ano yung tinatanong mo or yung available options. So, which statement most closely represents your point of view? So, you have one option and then another option. And then, rating question on a scale from 0 to 10, where 0 means extremely dissatisfied and 10 means extremely satisfied. How satisfied were you with the nursing care you received during hospitalization? So, bibilugan lang or pipiliin lang ni respondent Ko ano yung sagot niya dyan. For example, extra, uh, satisfied naman siya, pero hindi naman extremely. So, pwedeng around 7 or 8 siya. So, depende sa kanyang um, sagot. No? So, these are examples of close-ended question. Wherein, again, respondents mamimili lang sila ng sagot based on the available options. Any advantages ng close-ended questions? It can be accomplished easily by the respondents and then data are easier to analyze. Disadvantages, questions are more difficult to construct. So, mahirap mag-construct ng question pag close-ended. Kasi the, the researchers, no, they are the ones who will be constructing the question and also the possible questions. A major drawback of close-ended question is that researchers might omit potentially important responses. If respondents are verbally expressive and, co and cooperative, open-ended questions allow for richer information than close-ended questions. So, so, yun yung uh, isa sa mga disadvantage pa, no? Um, limited lang yung information 
na pwedeng makuha with close-ended question because there's there is no room for um follow-up question na no? kapag ka close-ended finally some respondents object to choosing from alternatives that do not reflect their opinions precisely. Kasi some respondents would say na, eh, wala naman dito sa options, sa given options, yung sagot ko. Eh, if that's the case, um, pwedeng mag, hindi niya sagutan totally yung questionnaire, or pwede niya naman sagutan, kaya lang it does not reflect kung ano talaga yung kanyang sagot. Kasi, namili lang siya based on the available options. So, yun po yung disadvantages. Kaya dapat, um, in constructing a uh, questionnaire, no using close-ended question, again, it must be validated by experts. And, if possible, yung reliability testing niya. So, the, uh, the opposite of close-ended question is, of course, open-ended question. Yung close-ended question, common ito sa mga quantitative research, of course. And then, itong open-ended questions, they are common sa mga qualitative. Some structured instruments, however, also include open-ended questions which allow participants to respond to questions in their own words. For example, why did you stop smoking? When open-ended questions are included in questionnaires, respondents must write out their responses. In interviews, the interviewer records responses verbatim. So again, dito freely nakakapagsalita or nakakapagsagot yung respondents or informants or participants no sa mga tanong ninyo. They can write whatever are their sentiments no about the given question. Kaya siya open-ended. Kumbaga, para siyang essay type of question. So paano naman yung question wording sa mga self-report data? In drafting questions for a structured instrument, researchers must clar uh, carefully monitor the wording of each question for clarity, absence of bias, and um, in questionnaires, the reading level. So again, kung kayo po ay gagawa ng sarili niyong questionnaire or instrument, uh, make sure that, uh, to observe these things. No? Kailangan clear ang inyong statement of questions objective without any biases and with um, on the level of on the reading level and comprehension of the respondents you have to consider who are your respondents now you have to consider if they are um, professional ba student ba um, are they um, a graduate level and the likes no also consider the the language or the dialects that they are that they are using no so you have to of course adjust sa yung mga respondents so yung gag gagawin mong questionnaire must be a uh, tailored fit no to your respondents and then questions must be sequenced in in a psychologically meaningful order that encourages cooperation and candor. So, kailangan, in short, meaningful yung order ng paggawa ng questions. No? Hindi yung pa-iba-iba pa or walang logical um, or meaningful order. Developing, pre-testing, and refining a self-report instrument can take many months. So, hindi po biro yung gumawa nga ng sariling questionnaire. No? It, it takes time it takes um months not to develop kasi nga ipapa-validate mo pa siya um to to experts no either content man yan face validity man yan and other types so hindi ibig sabihin hindi birong magpa-standardize ng questionnaire okay so let's start with the first type of a uh, first example of a self-report or patient-reported outcome, which is questionnaire. Again, the first um, type na i-discuss natin ng self-report pa rin tayo ha, or PRO, is a uh, questionnaire. So, questionnaires, which we mentioned earlier, ito ay um, pwedeng i-accomplish 
ng iyong respondents no, by themselves. Questionnaires may be used to measure knowledge levels, opinions, attitudes, beliefs, ideas, feelings, and perceptions, as well as to gather factual information about respondents. Of course, the validity of the data obtained through this method is governed by the respondent's willingness or ability to provide accurate information. So, mahalaga yung cooperation and again, truthfulness na ibibigay sa atin ng respondents. What are the advantages of using questionnaires? Again, common po ang questionnaires sa quantitative research design. They are less costly and are van and advantageous no, for geographically dispersed samples. So, mas madaling mag-print, magpa-Xerox, di ba, ng, ng um, questionnaire, tapos ibibigay, ibibigay mo yan to your respondents, and then wait for them to accomplish the paper, and you're done. Tapos, you can proceed to your next location kung ang iyong sample is ge geographically dispersed or medyo hiwa-hiwalay. Internet questionnaires. Nung pandemic, di ba? Um, uso itong online G-form natin. They are especially economical and are increasingly important means of gathering self-report data. Although ang response rates sa mga G-form, Google Form, or yung mga online um, questionnaire, the, the response rates are tend to be low, no? Questionnaires offer the possibility of anonymity that is also uh, an advantage which may be crucial in obtaining information about certain opinions or traits. So this is an example of a uh, questionnaire from this author 2015. Um, the author sent a web-based questionnaire to a convenience sample of 3,300 male college students. Imagine the number, no? 3,300. So, of course, napaka I mean, it is made possible by using a questionnaire. Diba? Um, so, the college students attending a public university. The purpose of the study was to document the rate of human papilloma virus vaccination in college men and to examine factors associated with being vaccinated. The responses were received from 410 students. In nga lang, di ba? As seen from this example, the response rate is quite low. Ang sinendan ay 3,300 male um, college students, but the response rate is just 410. So, yun yung disadvantage kapag ka online. Tama ba? This is online. Okay. Yeah, kasi it's a web-based questionnaire. So, only 410 responded to the question or to the survey questionnaire. Okay, at next natin, uh, so we're done with the first type of self-report, which is questionnaire. The second type is interview. Okay, common naman yung interview sa mga qualitative research design. So, another method for self-report data is interview when the questions are asked orally, face-to-face, -face, or by telephone or by using online platform nowadays. No? Di na medyo uso kasi ang telephone or uh, using cellphone no? through uh, in collecting data. It's either orally through face-to-face -face, or using an oral, uh, I mean, an online platform such as uh, Google Meet or Zoom, diba? Um, the advantages of interview schedule, uh, interviews, sorry, an adv the advantages of interviews include response rates tend to be high in face to face interviews. Respondents are less likely to refuse to talk to an interviewer than to ignore a questionnaire. Kasi parang, since it's an interview and you are asking the, the participants face-to-face, -face, parang mah mahirap silang mak makahindi, di ba? Sa gagawing data collection. Pero depende pa rin yan sa participants. 
So low response rates can lead to bias because respondents are rarely a random subset of the original sample. In the Internet Questionnaire Study of the College Men, the response rate was under 15%. And also, some people cannot fill out a questionnaire. For example, young children, which uh, places interview no, um, to, a, to an advantage. No? Interviews are feasible with most people. Again, um, some advantages of face-to-face -face interviews pa would also apply um, sa mga online platform. Long or complex instruments are not well suited to telephone or cell phone or online uh, platform. But for relatively brief instruments, um, interviews combine relatively low cost with high response rates. And then this is our example, Oliver and colleagues 2016 conducted telephone interviews with a sample of 1,024 participants. The interviews included questions about cancer risk knowledge with particular emphasis on colorectal cancer risk knowledge. So in this example, I think this is quantitative research seeing the number of respondents. So pwede kasing um, you collect data using interview, um, orally binabasa mo yung questionnaire to your respondents, and then ikaw na yun nag fill out based on their response. No? So, pwede naman yun uh, using interviews. But, um, commonly ginagamit din ang interviews no? sa mga qualitative research wherein meron tayong interview guide questions and um, tinatanong natin yung respondents or, or participants for qualitative research of their experiences, of their perceptions using a structured, semi-structured, or unstructured um, data collection. And again, if interviews are used um, for qualitative research, yung informants or participants natin ay hindi ganito kadami. So usually, nasa 20... 30 or even 10 lang yan. So, ganun lang siya until you reach the point of data saturation. So, let's talk about scales. Social psychological scales are often uh, incorporated into questionnaires or interview schedules. So, alam naman natin na yung, mga, yung questionnaires na ginagamit natin ay gumagamit ng scales or scale. A scale is a device that assigns a numeric score to people along a continuum like a scale for measuring weight. Social psychological scales differentiate people with different attitudes, perceptions, and psychological traits. So one technique is the Likert scale. Kilalang kilala nyo na to, Likert scale. Um, this is named after the developer Rensis Likert, which consists of several declarative statements, or also termed as items, that express a viewpoint on a topic. Respondents are asked to indicate how much they agree or disagree with the statement. Usually, five or seven responses po yan. So, depende sa pagkakagawa ng questionnaire or tool. Now, if five responses are used, scores on each item generally range from 1 to 5. A score of 1 is usually given to a strongly disagree, 2 to disagree, 3 to uncertain, 4 to agree, and then 5 to strongly agree. So meaning, 1 is the extreme na strongly disagree, and then 5 is the extreme na strongly agree. So, yun yung opposite ends natin. So, again, if the if the scale uses five uh, responses, no? Some researchers prefer to eliminate the uncertain category or yung, yung, yung three, di ba? One, two, three, four, five. Some researchers 
um, tinatanggal nila yung gitna. Kasi usually yung 3 or yung gitna is neutral or uncertain. Kumbaga, in between siya sa strongly agree and strongly disagree. So some researchers ayaw nun. So tinatag- tinatanggal nila yung option na yun, no And they force respondents into, sa- into some form of agreement or disagreement with the items. When the uncertain option or yung neutral nga is eliminated, however, respondents may be forced to select answers that are really not their choice. So this is an example of a Likert scale. This is table 10.0. It presents a six item Likert scale for measuring. So we have six items here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have five um, responses here, one, two, three, four, five. So it is a six item Likert scale for measuring attitudes toward using condoms. In this example, agreement with positively worded statement is assigned a higher score. The first statement is a positively worded statement, this one. So, ito yung item or the statement. Ito siya, ito yung, pag, yung kanyang pagkaka-wording, either positive or negative. So, one, four, five, they are positively worded. Meaning, um, positive yung statements. And then, 2, 3, and 6, they are negatively worded. Mahalaga na you know yung scoring ng instrument. You know kung gumamit ng positively or negatively worded statements. So that, you know what is the proper scoring. Kasi, magkaiba po yung scoring ng positive and negatively word uh negatively um worded statements no okay so the first statement is positively worded sabi ko nga agreements indicate indicates a favorable attitude toward condom use because there are five response alternatives a score of 5 would be given for strongly agree so sa is strongly agree that is 5. A is agree. Ito yung 4. Itong question, uh, question mark or uncertain. That is 3. Disagree is 2. Strongly disagree is um, 1. So in our example, we have two hypothetical participants here. Okay? Um, shown by a check or an X mark. Si person X, uh, si person check, Itong person 1, in check mark, yun yung sagot niya. Person 2, yung sagot niya ay X. For example, sa ating question number 1, si person 1, ang kanyang response ay agree. So, sa tanong na using a condom shows you care about your partner, ang sagot ni person 1 ay agree siya. And the score is 4. Okay? Kasi positive yung scoring niya. Uh, positive yung pagkaka-word ng statement. Well, si person 2, ang sagot niya ay strongly disagree. Meaning, siya ay not in favor. Kumbaga, sa uh, condom, that's why, in this statement, siguro, um, ang, ang sinagot niya ay 1, kasi nga, he, he is, is, is not in favor of the usage of the condom. So, Again, strongly disagree siya, so 1 yung kanyang score. Now, the second statement is negatively worded. Kapag ka negatively worded, sabi ko nga na iba yung scoring. So, the scoring is reverse. Okay, kapag ka negatively worded, a statement is assigned 1 for strongly agree. Kanina, sa positively worded, ang strongly agree is 5. So, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Kasi positively worded siya. Pero pag negatively worded siya, magiging opposite po yung scoring natin. So, magiging 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, of course, ang pinaka-highest score pag negatively worded ay strongly disagree. Okay? And then, yung strongly agree is just one point. Ano ba yung example ng 
negatively worded statement. My partner would be angry if I talk about using condom. Diba? Um, it's, it's a negatively worded statement. Kasi nga, um, her partner would be angry if um, the, the responded would talk about using condom. So, ayan. Um, in this example, si person 2, ang sagot niya ay 3, which is uncer uncertain siya, so that the score is 3. Si person 1, ang sagot niya ay um, strongly disagree. Kumbaga, consistent yung sagot ni person 1 na okay siya sa paggamit ng condom. Ibig sabihin, dito sa negatively worded question number 2, yung partner niya ay hindi naman magagalit sa kanya if he talks about using condom. Kasi strongly disagree siya dito. Okay, so ibig sabihin, um, seeing the, the answer of person 1 to all items, and seeing the score, 26 siya. Talagang makita mo na in favor siya uh, in using condoms. On the other hand, si person 2, makikita mo na low yung kanyang score in almost all of the items of the questionnaire. Ibig sabihin, uh, he is not in favor dito sa condom usage. Okay? So yun po, item reversals ang tawag dyan. It ensures that a high score consistently reflects positive attitude toward uh, positive attitudes toward condom use. Yung mga ganyang may positively and negatively worded statement or item reversals na tinatawag, um, it ensure na consistent yung response ng, respond, uh, ng, ng participants natin. Makikita nyo, binabasa nyo talaga yung statements if naiiba yung kanyang sagot kapag ka negatively worded. Tapos, may iba na naman pag positively worded. So again, dapat aware po kayo. If you are going to adapt a standardized questionnaire, dapat you are aware of the positively and negatively worded questions. You know how to properly score the questionnaire. Though si statistician naman yung gagawa nito, but sometimes um, the statisticians are asking for the details about the questionnaire. How to score the questionnaire. Okay, so moving forward, a person's total score is the sum of item scores. Hence, these scales are sometimes called summated rating scales or composite scale. Okay, so again, yung total score ng dito, Diba? Yung total score, tinototal kasi natin yung score. No? So, the higher the score, kumbaga, reflects the the attitude or the perceptions, the perception of the respondents um, on that aspect or on that area that you are trying to um, study. So, again, pagka sinam, sinamarize natin or tinotal natin um, yung score na yun, Liger scale is also termed as summated rating scales or composite scale. So in our example, person 1 has a more um, positive attitude toward condom use, a total of 26 points nga, than person 2 na may total na 11 points lang. Summing item scores makes it possibly to finally discriminate among People with different opinions. So nakikita natin doon, ano ba yung attitude or opinions or idea or knowledge even ng ating participants about doon sa pinag-aaralan nating study or research. Composite scales are often composed of two or more subscales that measure different aspects of a construct. Developing a high-quality scale requires a lot of skill and effort. So aside from Likert scale, we have the VAS or the Visual Analog Scale. It can be used to measure subjective experiences such as pain or fatigue. So common to, parang yung pain scale natin. So the VAS is a straight line and the end anchors are labeled as the extreme limits of the sensation being measured. People mark a point on the line 
corresponding to the amount of sensation experience. So traditionally, a vast line is 100 millimeters in length, so the, um, which makes it easy to derive a score from 0 to 100 by measuring the distance from one end of the scale to the mark on the line. So ito po yung example natin nung sinasabi ko. So ito yung visual analog scale. So we have a line here and we have two ends. One end, no, no pain at all. So this is an example of a VAS. And then the other end is pain as bad as it could be. The line is measure, uh, should measure 100 millimeters in length. And then the respondents or participants will indicate kung saan siyang line dyan. For example, the patient is um, not in any pain, so pwede niyang i-mark na dito. So meaning, talagang zero or no pain at all. Pero kung as, as the pain increases, so pwede siyang mag-mark going to the right, no? Um, going to the other end, which is pain as bad as it can be. So, ayan. So, in, in our example, you and core researchers 2015 tested the effects of earplugs, eye mask, and relaxing music on sleep quality in ICU patients. Sleep quality was measured using a 0 to 100 VAS. Advantages ng scales. So, let's talk about the different pros of scales. Scales permit researchers to efficiently quantify subtle gra uh, gradations in the intensity of individual characteristics. Scales can be administered either verbally or in writing and so can be used with most people. Disadvantage naman, scales are susceptible to several common problems. So ito, may, may mga technical terms tayo dito. Um... We have many of which no, yung, yung susceptible susceptibility ng scales to several problems. This is refer, referred to as response set biases. So ibig sabihin, ito yung mga problems commonly encountered no, uh, in using scales. So the most important biases are the following. Social desirability response set bias so it is a tendency to misrepresent attitudes or traits by giving answers that are consistent with prevailing social views so meaning kung ano yung napapanahong social views or, or social opinions that time pwedeng yun na rin ang isagot ni respondents natin not truly or not true of his or her answer Kumbaga, makikisagot na lang siya based on the social opinions during that time. Okay, social desirability response set bias yon. And then, extreme re response set bias is a tendency to consistently express extreme attitudes. For example, strongly agree or agree uh, leading to distortions because extreme responses may be unrelated to the trait being measured. Ito yung mga respondents naman na mahilig magsagot ng extreme answer. For example, you have a given statement and then ang isasagot niya is extreme. Halimbawa, 5 o kaya 1. Strongly agree or strongly disagree. So these are extreme answers na uh, pinili niya lang pero not really um, the, the, the perception or attitude or hindi talaga yun yung true answer niya. No? Kung baga, laging extreme yung kanyang mga sagot na pinipili. And then, so you have here the acquiescence response set bias. So, it's a tendency to agree with statements regardless of their content by some people. Ito yung tinatawag natin yes-sayers. Okay? So, kung baga, ito yung mga agree na lang na agree regard regardless of the statement. So, yes-sayers, they will just agree. No? kahit hindi naman yun talaga yung kanilang opinion or, or knowledge or perception. And then the opposite is tendency for other people to disagree, ang tawag naman natin doon, naysayers, with statements independent, 
Lee of the question content is less common. So, mas common po yung yesayers na agree lang na agree kahit hindi naman talaga yun yung kanilang sagot. So, yun lang, yun yung mga disadvantages ng um, using scales. No? Researchers can reduce these biases by developing sensitively worded questions. Yun na nga, um, pwede kayong mag-positive and negatively worded questions. You have to be objective in wording your questions, create a permissive, non-judgmental atmosphere, and guaranteeing the confidentiality of responses. Of the responses. And also, um, we have to remind the participants or respondents na there are no right or correct answers. Lagi dapat natin sinasabi na walang tama or maling sagot at sagutan nila yung questions ninyo or yung questionnaire based on what they feel, based on what they truly perceive, or based on their true knowledge talaga. Okay? Yun dapat siya na-emphasize natin. Walang tama, walang maling sagot. Sagutan lang nila based on what they, um, based on their true perception talaga. Yun dapat yung na-emphasize natin before um, giving the questionnaires to our respondents. Okay, so yun po yung first type. So, nasa first type pa lang tayo ng data, which is about self-report or PRO, Patient Reported Outcome. So, just to recall, we have um, yung dalawang most common na ginagamit natin for self-reports. You have the um, questionnaires and you have the interviews. Now, moving to another type of um, data, would be observational methods. Ang pinaka-common, di ba, nasabi ko kanina na type ng data ay self-report. So, observational, meron din tayo nito, but uh, less common. Depende, depende talaga yan on the type of your research design. And how would you answer your SOP? For some research questions, direct observation of people's behavior is an alternative to self-reports, especially in clinical settings. Observational methods can be used to gather such information as patient's condition. For example, the sleep-wake state, verbal communication, non-verbal communication, activities, and environmental conditions. Observations can be made through the human senses and then recorded manually but they can also be done with equipment such as video recorders. So researchers do not always tell people they are being observed because of awareness of being observed may cause people being uh, behave uh, people to behave atypically. Behavioral uh, distortions due to the known presence of an observer is called reactivity. Or diba um we have also talked about the Hawthorne effect. So, recall yung mga um, concepts na yun that would affect no, the result of the study. The, the concept of Hawthorne effect, tapos itong reactivity. No? Structured um, observation involves the use of formal instruments and protocols that dictate what to observe how long to observe it, and how to record the data. Structured observation is not intended to capture a broad slice of life, but rather to document specific behaviors, actions, and events. Now, take note that researchers often use structured observations when participants cannot be asked questions or cannot be expected to provide reliable answers. So, kung hindi makapagsagot, ng maayos yung ating respondents or hindi possible yung self-report question, uh, self-report data, then we can resort to observational no? or structured observations in this matter. Many observational instruments are designed to capture the behaviors of infants, for example, children or people whose communication skills are impaired. So yun, doon natin common na ginagamit itong observation. Advantages, certain research questions are better suited to observation than to self-reports, such as when people cannot describe their own behaviors. 
This may be the case when people are unaware of their behavior. For example, yung mga stress-induced behavior. When behaviors are emotionally laden, such as in grieving, or when people are not capable of reporting their actions, such as in the case of young children. Observational methods have an intrinsic appeal for directly capturing behaviors. Nurses often are often in a position to watch people's behaviors and may, by training, be especially sensitive observers. Tayo, in terms of our assessment, di ba? We are trained to have a good assessment sa ating pasyente. Kaya, of course, we can also do this type of um, data collection, yung observation. Disadvantages nito, shortcomings of observational methods include possible reactivity. No, yun na nga yung um, naging reactive yung ating participants because or nagbe-behave sila in such a way na mas maayos because they know they are being observed. Or the Hawthorne effect, no? When the observer is conspicuous and the vulnerability of observations to bias. For example, the observer's values and prejudices may, le may lead to faulty inference. Observational biases probably cannot be eliminated but they can be minimized through careful observer training and assessment. So one, again, an, uh, an, a disadvantage is yung paging objective then ng ating um, observer. No? Sometimes, um, nagkakaroon ng bias yung ating observer to that of being observed. That, of course, um, leads to unreliable data. Kaya mahalaga yung training and assessment no, for observers, yung, yung gagawa nung, nung method na to. A, an assessment and training um, should be done prior to the data collection para walang bias, walang prejudices yung ating observers. Okay, so one example of observation um, is, or the first method of observation is the category system. So this is the most common approach to making structured observations. A category system. So again, this is structured, no? So meaning, yung observation material na gagamitin is well composed. A category system represents a method of recording in a systematic fashion the behaviors and events of interest that transpire within a setting. Some category systems require that all observed behaviors in a specified domain, for example, body positions be classified. A contrasting technique is a system in which only particular types of behavior which may or may not occur are categorized. So, an example dito, if we were studying children's aggressive behavior, we might develop such categories. Kaya nga tinawag na category system. Pwede tayong, again, you're, you're studying about children's aggressive behavior. So, pwede kang magkaroon ng categories such as strikes another child or throws objects. In this category system, many behaviors, all that are non-aggressive, would not be classified. Some children may exhibit no aggressive actions. So meaning kinakategorize natin yung observed behaviors. Category systems must have careful, explicit operational definitions of the behaviors and characteristics to be observed. Each category must be explained giving observers clear-cut criteria for assessing the occurrence of the phenomenon. So in this example by Nielsen and colleagues 2014, a study of nursing care quality that involved observations of communication between nurses and mechanically ventilated patients in an ICU. Among many different types of observations made, observers recorded instances of positive 
and negative nurse behaviors. So, yun yung naging category, no? Positive and negative nurse behaviors. According to carefully defined criteria, nurses behavior, nurse behaviors that were neutral were not categorized. Ayan. So, actually, um, in my experience, wala pa akong na, nabasa or na-handle na advice ko using this one, observation na category system. Well, yung observation type of data nga kasi, sabi natin, is seldomly used. More often than not, we resort to a self-report um, data, no? yung mga questionnaire and, and interviews. Kaya less common itong um, observation. More so itong category system. Now, category systems are the basis for constructing a checklist. No? Um, the instrument observers use to record observations. So, again, checklist is instrument obser um, the instrument observers use to record observations. Kung baga, kaya nga siya tinawag na checklist, di ba? Um, Naka-indicate or enumerate lahat ng observations. So, check-in lang ng observer kung nangyari ba or hindi. Parang yung sa skills ninyo, di ba, in your RLE, um, your CI is observing you, no? If the if the skills or the 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 technique or the procedure is done or not done. So yun yung checklist natin. The checklist is usually formatted with a list of behaviors from category system on the left and space for tallying the frequency or duration on the right. The task of the observer using an exhaustive category system is to place all observed behaviors in one category for each unit of behavior. Example, the time interval. With non-exhaustive category systems, categories of behaviors that may or may not be manifested by the participants are listed. The task of the observer using an exhaustive category system is to place all Observe behaviors in one category for each unit of behavior. Okay, so, ayan. The observer watches, for instance, says this observation, uh, these behaviors and records their occurrence. Kumbaga, tinatali niya no, kung ilang beses um, nangyari yung action na yun or yung behavior na yun. So, another approach to structured observation is to use a rating scale, an instrument that requires observers to rate phenomenon along a descriptive continuum. Yung kanina, we use checklist, di ba? Still under category system, but the, the way it's constructed is using checklist. In this one, um, still a category system, but the way it is structured is using a rating scale. An instrument that requires observers to rate phenomena along a descriptive continuum. The observer may be required to make ratings at intervals throughout the observation or to summarize an entire event after observation is completed. Rating scales can be used as an extension of checklist in which the observer records not only the occurrence, of some behaviors but also some qualitative aspects aspect of it such as its intensity although this approach yields a lot of information it places an, Im an immense burden on observers so again um pwedeng goes hand in hand no itong si um checklist natin kanina with rating scale pwedeng after checklist pwedeng magkaroon tayo ng rating scale kaya lang the task is um, being shouldered by the observer. Medyo um, matrabaho lang or laborious on the end of the observer. Kasi aside from the checklist, i-accomplish na pa yung rating scale. But of course, mas rich yung information if combined itong yung kanina natin, rating scale combined with a, ra uh, sorry, a checklist combined with a rating scale. So, example from Burke and colleagues 2014, he sought to identify factors that would predict agitation 
in critically ill adults. Patients' um, degree of agitation was observed and measured using the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale, which requires ratings on a 10-point scale from um, positive 4 combative to negative 5 and arousal. So, yung numbering or the rating will depend on, again, the, the variable that is being measured. Okay, next we have observational sampling. So, researchers must decide when to apply their observational systems. Observational sampling methods are, means, are a means of obtaining representative examples of behaviors being observed. So, one system is time sampling, which involves selecting time periods during which observations will occur. Time frames may be selected systematically, for example, every 30 seconds, at 2 minute intervals, or at random. So in this slide, we're trying to discuss lang uh, when to do an observation. So kumbaga, we're just doing a sampling when we are going to conduct an, an observational um, technique. No? So yun ang nga na natin yung time sampling, we're in... Um, you will be using time periods no, for your observations. Letter B or next would be event sampling. Researchers select integral events to observe. So event sampling requires researchers to either know when events will occur, for example, nursing shift changes or wait for their occurrence. Event sampling is a good choice when events of interest are infrequent and may be missed if time sampling is used. So when behaviors and events are relatively frequent, however, time sampling enhances the representativeness of the observed behaviors. So this is an example of event and time sampling. In the previously mentioned observational study of nurse patient communication in ICU by Nielsen 2014, Events were first sampled. So, an example muna sila ng event, and that is nurse patient interaction, and then three minute segments of interaction on four separate occasions over a two day period were videotaped and then coded for a range of outcomes. Example, making eye contact. So, meaning yung observation natin is also uh, conducted via sampling. No, So, you, you choose whether an event sampling or time sampling is applicable in your study if you will be using observational method as a type of your data collection. So that is um, for the second type, major type of um, data that is observations. No? So again, um, just to recall, ang naging una natin is self-report or PRO patient um, reported outcome. Second would be the observation, and we discussed the category system under the observation. And then finally, the last one, the, the last type of data would be biophysiologic measures. By the way, there are others, but again, ito lang yung major na i-discuss natin, no? the, the, the major types of data, uh, types of data. So, biophysiologic measures or physiological measures involve the collection of physical data from subjects. These types of measures are generally more objective and accurate than many of the other data collection methods. Clinical nursing studies involve biophysiologic instruments both for creating independent variables, for example, a biofeedback intervention, and for nursing uh, for measuring dependent variables. So nurse researchers have used biophysiologic measures for a wide variety of purposes. Examples include studies of basic biophysiologic processes, explorations of the ways in which nursing actions and interventions affect physiologic outcomes, product assessment, studies evaluate the accuracy of biophysiologic information gathered by nurses, and studies of the correlates of the physiologic functioning in patients with health problems. So, commonly ginagamit itong biophysiologic measures in clinical settings or in research designs employing um, experimental studies. 
So we have here both in vivo and in vitro measurements are used no, in research. When I say in vivo measurements, this, uh, those are performed directly with in or on living organisms such as blood pressure and body temperature measurement. Meaning um, you are measuring the, the data um, on a living organism. On the other hand, um, by the way, technological advances continue to improve the ability to measure biophysiologic phenomena accurately and conveniently. Mas napadali itong in vivo measurements now with all the devices, modern devices that we have nowadays. We can measure the in vivo, um, me uh, me I mean data no much easier using technology. In vitro measures, data are gathered from participants by extracting biophysiologic material from them and subjecting it to analysis by laboratory technicians. In vitro measures include chemical measures, for example, measurement of hormone levels, microbiologic measures such as bacterial counts and identification, and cytologic or histologic measures such as tissue biopsies. Um, in one of my advices, they they collected blood samples, no, to test um the effectivity of capsaicin in blood coagulation. That's why, um, in their in their sample or in their study, they collected blood sample from the respondents, and that falls dito sa in vitro measures. Kung saan nag extract ng material from the respondents and then subject it sa laboratory analysis. So nurse researchers also use anthropomorphic measures such as the body mass index and waist circumference. Common to. Ito mga BMI. No? And um, waist circumference. No? So, Holly et al. examined the physiological responses of non-smokers to nicotine patch administration. The researchers measured the heart rate. So, that is, uh, that, is an in, uh, that is in vivo measurement. Diba? Measuring the heart rate, blood pressure, and then serum naman, nicotine, levels at 0 0.5, 1 hour, 1 hour, and 2 hours after applying a nicotine patch. If you will extract the serum no from your respondents, then that would be in vitro na, no. Advantages, biophysiologic measures offer a number of advantages to nurse researchers. They are relatively accurate and precise, especially compared to psychological measures such as self-report measures of anxiety or pain. Also, biophysiologic measures are off are objective. Two nurses reading from the same spirometer output, for example, are likely to record identical tidal volume measurements, and two spirometers are likely to produce the same readouts. So patients cannot easily distort measurements no, of biophysiologic functioning. Finally, biophysiologic instruments provide valid measures of targeted variables. Thermometers, for example, can be relied on to measure temperature and not blood volume, etc. For non-biophysiologic measures, there are typically concerns about whether an instrument is really measuring the target concept. Okay, so that um, so those are the the major types of data. So you have again the self-reports or the PRO the observations, and then you have here the biophysiologic measures. Okay, yung succeeding slides, you have data collection instrument. This was discussed naman na previously, right? Yung adopting the instrument na letter O, and then adopting the instrument na letter A. Sige, very quickly, let's just um, have a quick recap no, of this concept. Adopting the instrument na letter O, is the use of an already tested instrument. Kaya O, it means zero. 
yung use an existing instrument without any modification. Kaya zero modification. It helps connect the present study with the existing body of knowledge on the variables. Some of the best sources are published compilations of instruments. So these compilations are particularly useful because they contain discussions of the instruments such as the reliability and validity tools. Okay, um, of course, the, the instrument that you must select must be appropriate no, to measure the study variables, meaning the, the instrument that you're going to adopt is really relevant and aligned to your study. And if wala talagang kailangan i-modify, then you can use adopt na letter O. You, you may use the questionnaire as it is, kung baga. Many of the existing instruments are copyrighted. No? So, the copyright holder must be contacted no? through email man yan or other, other means no? to obtain permission to use such an instrument. Sometimes, this permission is given without cost and other times, the researcher has to pay for permission to use the instrument or purchase copies of the tool. So, sometimes, no, yung owner of the instrument talagang once you as for permission, they are giving the questionnaire and the details, all the details necessary related to the questionnaire free, no, without any um, cost. Pero sometimes the questionnaire um, underwent kasi a rigorous validation and testing na guma gumasos talaga yung um, owner or the original author of that instrument. Kaya sometimes they are asking for a fee no sa mga gustong gumamit ng kanilang instruments or questionnaire so if that is the if that is the case then you have to pay for fees no if ever the the author will be asking for for such instruments developed in research projects supported by public funding generally remain in the public domain investigators have free access to these types of instruments if you have seen naman the adopt the instruments that you will be adopting is um, nakalagay exact statement na, I mean, with the statement na nagsasabi na it is a uh, public domain and can be used by anyone freely without any cost or compensation, then uh, without any cost or without any fees, then you can freely use the questionnaire naman. Pero otherwise, kung walang ganon, um, hindi siya publicly available, then you have to seek permission to the authors. So if an existing instrument will be used, it may be desirable to contact the developer of the instrument to obtain information on its use in past research. This information is usually provided freely. Tool developers are generally pleased when other researchers want to use their creations. Frequently, the only request that will be made is that a copy of the study results and the data, particularly data on the reliability and validity of the instrument, be forwarded to the person who developed the instrument. Sometimes may mga ganong scenario. May ganong nare-require si developer or author of the instrument. Now, developing an instrument, if no instrument can be discovered that is appropriate for a particular study, the researcher is faced with developing a new instrument. The development of a completely new instrument is a demanding task. It has to undergo instrument reliability and validity tests. Just like what we have discussed previously before, it can be officially used for your data collection. Adapting an instrument na letter A naman, it is also, also it may be possible no, to revise an existing instrument. Caution must be exercised when this approach um, to instrument development is used. If any items are altered or deleted or new items are added to an existing instrument, the reliability and validity of the tool might also be altered. So, new reliability and validity testing um, will need to be conducted. Kapag may papalitan, tatanggalin, or i-add kayo 
to the original instrument. Also, permission to revise the instrument will have to be obtained from the developer of the tool or yung tinatawag nga natin, instrument adaptation na letter A. So, the development of a completely new instrument is a demanding task. Medyo laborious yan and time-consuming and also requires um, cost, no? Kapag ka magpapavalidate kayo sa experts. And um, we have reached na the conclusion of our discussion. So, good luck on your data collection. Thank you for taking time to listen. If you have any questions, can you raise them to me during our synchronous meeting? God bless you and ingat lagi.